Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a review of Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards and their duel at Mount Skull's Fire. Yeah, I know, very interesting name. Hope you guys enjoy this review. As once again, Cryptozoic, thanks to them for sending me a, a, a sample of the game. And I really had a lot of fun playing this game. And and let's just go ahead and get straight into it. This is going to be part one of a two-part review. Um, for part one, I'm actually trying my best to let you guys see the cards and see what I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys enjoy this over the lock and key review where bad glare and you know not a very good camera and just uh, just I'm trying to add a little bit more production and you guys hopefully do enjoy this. Now, first thing I wanted to say on Epic Spell Wars and the battle Epic Spell Wars, which I will be calling it now, not the entire name, Epic Spell Wars, is that you are trying to kill and be the last wizard standing. You're trying to kill all of your friends, and in order to do so, you are constructing spells off of cards that you are dealt. Now, this game has a lot of luck, and it has some skill, and it, and it is a lot of fun to play. So um, I'll go ahead and get to into the cards in just a moment. But I wanted to give you guys a good example of a card right, right from the get-go, or a spell right from the get-go. What you're going to see is this spell is made up of three cards. Now, the more powerful the spell, the longer the spell, the longer it takes to cast. But that's a little bit more on the, on the side note. But let's go ahead and just dive into the, the spell itself. Spells will always have, or if it is a three card spell, will have a source, a quality, and a delivery. The source is Whirly Dews. The quality in this particular instance would be Burst Oramic. And then the delivery would be Meteor Swarm. Yeah, so this would be Whirly, Do Whirly Dews, Burst Oramic, Meteor Swarm. And you are essentially trying to cast the most devastating spell to clear off all of your opponents. Now, um, later on in the game, you may not want to cast a three card spell, just a little bit of advice, as three card spells tend to be slow, and if you're low on life, each player starts off with 20 in a normal game. If you only have two life and you cast this gargantuan of a spell, you may not be able to get it off as someone may beat you to the draw in terms of getting their spell to finish you off. So always an important point to note. Now, how do you construct a spell? What are the sources? What are the elements? What are the glyphs? What are, what are all these words that I'm talking about? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some cards. Now, a source is a card that you will see. Uh, currently, I have Midnight Merlin's card on the top left. This one card has a glyph and is also a source. So you will see that the cards actually piece together very well in order to create a spell. Midnight Merlins says that I deal one damage to my strongest foe for each living wizard. Then I get to draw a dead wizard card. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dead wizard card before I continue. Now, just because you die in Epic Spells Moors doesn't mean that you are out of the game. Because in order for someone to truly win Epic Spell Wars, and it's not based all upon luck, a player needs to win the game twice. Now, if you die... Um, you just sit around and you get to watch everyone else fight, but you also collect these dead wizard cards. These dead wizard cards are very, very nice cards that will either help you immediately in your game or they will help you in the next game. Um, or more, more than likely, they will help you in the next game. So even if you die early here, your afterlife artifact will allow you to gain a treasure at the start of the game. Now you may be wondering, what is a treasure? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a treasure. A treasure is an additional card, an additional card that you play alongside you that triggers and has a really, really nice bonus effect. You just do whatever it says on the card. In this particular instance, treasure, crown of the meek, each dark card cast by a foes deals one damage to that foe before the card card's effect resolves. So if someone was to play Midnight Merlin's Devilicious Exorcism, so Midnight Merlin's Devilicious Exorcism here, oh, a little bit of a misline, Devilicious Exorcism, because these cards all have the Dark Glyph, I would take three damage. Now, there is a reason why you want to try to combine spells and have a lot of, and, and, and try to create the most powerful spell possible. In this particular instance, by lining up all of your Dark Glyph, 
it actually has a better cohesive effect on the spell itself. Let's go ahead and take a look at Devilicious. Now, in Devilicious, it says target the foe of your choice. So that means any foe on the field, I get to target and I have to roll for power. Now, in order to determine how strong or how many die you get to roll, you need to count the number of glyphs that match the current card. So in this particular instance, on Devilicious, it's a dark glyph, and then you need to see how many dark glyphs you have in your spell. In this instance, you have three dark glyphs, so you will be rolling three die. If you roll a one to a four, very unlucky for you, you only deal two damage to your foe. If you roll five to nine, then your opponent, then your foe takes four damage and you take one. And then if you get 10, which is considered a crit at this point, you deal five damage to your foe and you take two. Very, very nice spell, able to deal a lot of damage. Remember, each player only starts off with 20 life. So if there's five players playing in the game, you can, Midnight Merlin could already deal five damage to him. And then follow it up, um, the Devilicious could do another 5 damage to him. And then you now move on to Exorcism. Exorcism here says target each foe. Um, if somehow you roll a, a 3 or a 4 off of 3 die, you suffer 1 damage. Otherwise, um, 5 to 9, you guys can read it. Very, very powerful spell. Now, in case of a tie between your spells, like an, an, in the number of cards they are, you go ahead and you take a look at the initiative. If you look on the delivery card, you will see a number in that um, in that corner right there, and that tells you the initiative of the card. So what all the players are going to do at first is all the players um, have their spells and they put it face down in front of their table uh, on the table in front of them. Then they declare, okay, anyone have, okay, I have a three card spell. I have a three card spell. If anyone has a two card spell, because their spell is shorter, they would get to go first. Um, early in the game, um, you, you, most players will be using three card spells. So if there is a tie, which normally there will be, you then compare initiatives. If a, and whatever has a higher initiative gets to go first. So um, I think the initiatives go up to, I believe, 19. So th that's a very, very important point to note and to note as well. So Midnight Merlin's Devilicious Exorcism, a very, very powerful spell. Now, what happens when you have a spell that doesn't match all the glyphs? Even if you do not have a spell that matches all the glyphs, you can still have a very, very nice effect. Say instead of Devilicious, and you added a little bit of mystery. You had a mysterious exorcism as opposed to a devilicious exorcism. You would still trigger Midnight Merlin's effect. You go from left to right, but mysterious does something different than devilicious. It says deal one damage to the foe on your right for each different glyph in your spell and each treasure that you have. So I could perhaps deal three damage to the person on my right if I have a treasure, and you can see that there are actually three separate glyphs in this spell. So two dark and one arcane. Finally, moving on to exorcism, instead of rolling three die, you would roll two die just because you only have one dark glyph. Now, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. It feels like I'm missing some very important point somewhere. I'm, I'm probably going to take a look at this. But you got to remember, this is only part one of a two-part review. I will be um, actually doing a playtest session and playing and teaching some of my friends how to play and just to see perhaps two rounds of action in Epic Spell Wars. Now, for all of you guys out there who are who are looking and wondering what um, what other spells there are, I'm, I do have Power Vortex um, available for you and I also have Sir Lutzor's. So, Sir Lutzor's Mysterious Power Vortex a nice arcane spell across the board as opposed to just the typical dark spell that I showed you guys originally. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you guys enjoy the review or um, enjoy the second half, make sure to go ahead and visit your local hobby store, local game store to pick up a copy of the game. It really is a lot of fun and it gets me out of the house even though I'm still playing games. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.